Hi folks, uh, David Jamieson here, editor of Conta.co.uk and um, we're continuing discussions around a, a theme of the suspension of Jeremy Corbyn but I wanted to, to broaden this out um, a bit and bring in some of the, the wider issues, the over, overriding issues which have underpinned that campaign and uh, I think one of the saddest things about um, this campaign against the left in Britain is that it's overshadowed the monumental issue of Palestine solidarity, of the conditions faced by the Palestinian people. Um, so I'm very glad today to have uh, Tawfiq Haddad. Uh, welcome. Thanks very much for coming on this video. My pleasure, David. Thank you. And he is a, a scholar of um, the, the Palestinian movement, um, uh, of issues surrounding Palestine, the author of uh, a new book um, titled Palestine uh, Limited, Neoliberalism and Nationalism in the Occupied Territories. Uh, and someone who has followed issues, of course, in the area, uh, uh, movements around Palestine, solidarity, the politics of um, imperialism in the region. It's, it's been sad uh, in the West for those of us who uh, have been supporters of the Palestinian cause to watch um, awareness of, of the Palestinian fight and the Palestinian condition sort of drop away uh, un, under the uh, attacks that we faced in. From about 2009, an operation cast led, uh, and then on through um, the decade after that, really, we saw uh, increasing, escalating uh, social movements in defense of Palestinian rights, both the um, boycott and divestment campaign, you know, there were a thriving sort of university scene uh, in that campaign, but also a much wider movement, huge demonstrations, huge shows of solidarity when um, uh, Palestine came under, you know, regular attack in the last 10 years. There was significant uh, uh, solidarity among football fans. So it was really a, a growing presence. And I remember thinking, and in about the middle of the last decade, there's no going back from this. This is like apartheid now in that once the, the moral, uh, morally just position of the occupied people is accepted, it's very hard to roll it back. But I have to say, I think it has uh, been effectively damaged by this campaign, by the claims that it's motivated by um, anti-Semitism. So I wanted to ask, why is solidarity in, in the West still important for, for the Palestinian cause? Um, particularly because, and I think that this needs to be borne in mind for those of us in the West, um, this is a colonial project which has its roots in the West. You know, it is there as um, Israel operates as a sort of bastion of Western influence in the uh, in the region. So why why is it important to keep up those efforts in the West? Well, thank you for the question. It's an important question. Um, given the answer that I gave to the previous question, basically showing that uh, Israel has enormous asymmetrical power over the Palestinians, there will be limitations, and it's very difficult for the Palestinians to basically. Um, uh, well, I don't want to say liberate themselves because that's not the, the, what, what I, the sort of message I want to give. What I do, what, as you elaborated on, Israel is a colonial project in the Middle East that is, would not have been able to have been created or sustained or be as strong as it is today were it not for the effective power and support that it received militarily, diplomatically, financially. Uh, from the Western powers. And of course, this started with Great Britain and England uh, and uh, transitioned in later years to the United States, which basically sees Israel as an effective, uh, organically pro-Western uh, state in the region. That's because it, it effectively, uh, not only were the, the Jewish settlers who came to Palestine to set up the state westernly oriented, but basically Zionism was only an effective uh, uh, a project that was supported until it, it uh, enmeshed itself with British colonial and imperial 
agendas. Effectively at the time, basically England was keen to have a, a pro-Western ally uh, in this sort of e the Eastern Mediterranean that could overlook uh, the Suez Canal, protecting basically the road to India. So all the Zionist uh, waves of colonization of Palestine that took place before the Balfour Declaration, when this, this effectively took place, were actually um, unsuccessful. And you had Jews who came and who left. But it's starting in 1916, or let's say 21, when the mandate really begins to come into effect. Uh, this, is this is what it's about. Uh, and England had, of course, Egypt and India as the two key sort of colonies that it wanted to protect the US later takes on after 1967 this role because effectively by that point in the uh, decolon post-World War II, you had a, a pan-Arab nationalist movement. You have three to 400 million Arabs in the region of North Africa to, or Arabic speaking countries, shall we say, not just Arabs, from North Africa to the Middle East, uh, who had effective uh, links of different kinds of history and language and religion and commonalities that effectively made them a, a potential competitor to Europe. And historically, you also have this issue of uh, this region being the shortest uh, 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 trade route to, to the East in addition to the fact that there are four key choke points in this region uh, that, uh, so you have the Straits of Gibraltar, you have the Suez Canal, you have Bab al Mandeb, and you have the Straits of Hormuz. So the Levant region, which played in a, a sort of a, a very important sort of political leadership role, let's say, of the Arab cause, was very important to have a foothold in. And uh, the Zionists understood this and understood that they needed to, uh, the, the, Israel always lacked a mother country like, like the way the, the French were in Algeria, so to speak. So they needed to sell their services to the effective imperial power at the time. And that's what they did. And today they're doing it with the Americans, before it was England, and tomorrow they, they might even try and do it with the Chinese. Uh, so, uh, and let's not also forget today the Eastern Mediterranean has significant uh, gas reserves that Europe wants to use to be able to diversify its gas intake you know, and making it less dependent upon the Russians and Ukrainians and stuff, or Russian controlled Ukraine. So in any sense, uh, the, the geostrategic significance of this area and what Israel does for the West in this region is, is well known and can be established. And for that reason, uh, uh, this, is a, this is effectively the big chessboard upon which this, this conflict takes place. We see on a daily basis the Israelis and Palestinians, you know, whatever, involved in their, 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 their you know, uh, conflict between quotation marks. But effectively, this is a much larger thing that's taking place. Uh, and so uh, basically, the people, folks in the West are uh, uniquely positioned, even if they do not realize this, in, in being able to, uh, uh, to change this, that, uh, particularly because in most cases they, they exist in, in democracies, even though they may be eroding at this stage. And the point is, uh, the basic argument that we need to be making is that our, our US tax dollars or British pounds best spent on uh, supporting 50 years of military occupation in Palestine or the apartheid regime of Israel, which <laughs> tries to constitutionalize Jewish supremacy uh, and uh, it's trying to effectively ethnically cleanse the rest of Palestine from its, quote, non-Jewish inhabitants, the Palestinians. Or are, are these resources best spent on schools, on coronavirus, on infrastructure, on all the social needs that pe folks need there? And, and that fundamental contradiction needs to be pushed um, because that's really where it's from. Policy is not made in Israel, Palestine. It's made in Washington, in Brussels, in London. And uh, the more effective social movements and political movements that we have in, uh, in, in those countries, the more ability we will have in Palestine for justice. Uh, and uh, th I might also argue that Israel is not just playing an important role in suppressing, suppressing Palestinian human rights or national aspirations, or for matter that matter, the rest of the Arab world. Let's not forget that Israel has bombed eight different <laughs> Arab countries and almost on a daily basis is even bombing Syria and uh, who knows doing what else. But they are also being very important players these days in the surveillance technologies that are pervasive and eroding 
a, a, a democracy in, in, the, in the United States and in, in Western countries today. So there are important parallels that also should be uh, drawn because it's, uh, because it's not just, we, we don't want sympathy, we want solidarity uh, because uh, these are principles. This is what's an injury to one is an injury to all. And uh, history has shown that if you don't stand up for things like the Palestinian cause or certain principles, then they will come back to haunt you. And that's actually what's happening right now. We see it very clearly in the Trump campaigns now and certainly Boris Johnson as well. I think that the way that you've um, portrayed that relationship is really important for you know socialists and, and Palestine solidarity activists in the West to bear in mind. Because when you have... Um, conservative politicians, say in Britain, accusing the, Jeremy Corbyn on the left of, of anti-Semitism. They're, um, they're not protecting um, Israel out of a sense of moral obligation or out of a sense of solidarity or because they think that what Israel is doing is right. They're not doing something charitable. They're defending their own interests. You know, what, the way the Israel, Israeli state operates um, it's, it's colonial policies internally, it's foreign policy, as you say, in terms of the wider Arab world. Um, the way it operates is in the interests of the British state and the US state, you know, the establishments of these countries, the foreign policy establishments. They are not defending Israel because they just think it's a nice idea. It, they, they have an investment in this working out and they have an investment in their own populations supporting that project and uh, in their own populations thinking that any objection to this is uh, anti-Semitism. And you know, um, something you said there, uh, that Israel also feeds back out into Western countries, for example, um, surveillance te techniques, intelligence techniques and technologies, um, weapons technologies and so on. Saying something like that in Britain these days you know, you would easily have you castigated uh, 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 as an anti-Semite. In fact, uh, an actor, Maxine Peake, um, said that, um, that the methods that Western police forces sometimes use uh, to, to restrain, for example, protests and things like these, these, some of these techniques are developed in Israel. This is all true. I, I mean, it's, it's, but this was also true of South Africa, that the kind of, um, given that it's a martial outpost, given that it's a place where, um, you know, the, the West also uses these places as laboratories to develop military techniques and securitization techniques and, and, and things like that, and then re-export them back, back out into the world. It's just a provable fact. But even saying that now sees people in, in Western countries accused of anti-Semitism, which I think is very dangerous because it obviously undermines the real <laughs> phenomena of anti-Semitism if you're simply leaving everything as anti-Semitism. But in any case, um, you know, th this is how colonial states act. This is their wider geostrategic uh, and, and, and social role. And it was just the same with uh, uh, South Africa. So I think you situated that, the nature of these things, very uh, uh, correctly. Um, let me just ask about your um, perceptions of that um, campaign uh, in the West. I mean, there has presumably, I mean, the, the claim that uh, solidarity with the Palestinian people, the criticism of Israel, the claim that this represents anti-Semitic racism has presumably been quite a long-standing claim within the, the kind of broader Zionist movement itself and within the kind of official Israeli politics and, and, and so on. I mean, I've always been aware of it so long as I've been involved in the Palestine Solidarity Movement. Um, but it's never gained this kind of mainstream traction in the Western media and Western politics and so on before. What's the kind of, what's the, what's the history of that, of, of that claim? Um, I mean, have Palestinians always been told that they are anti-Semites for resisting oppression? Sure, sure. Uh, certainly they're longstanding. Uh, uh, the accusation is long-standing. However, it's actually more complicated than that because Israel's relationship with the Holocaust was uh, something that uh, they were not willing to talk about so much in the early days of the state. And in, in fact, uh, there's 
there's excellent uh, histories of this. I recommend Tom Segev's book, The Seventh Million, about how the Israeli state uh, and, uh, and Zionists sort of castigated Holocaust survivors. And even today, if you actually look today, Holocaust survivors are not actually, uh, I mean, they still receive forms of compensation, but they, there's, there's high rates of poverty amongst them. Um, but I, I don't want to get too much into that, uh, but, but, but your question was addressing uh, certainly, uh, you know, there has been a long-standing accusations by Israel. It is proven relatively effective to attempt to simply say that uh, the claim for Palestinian rights by Palestinians, Arabs, or anybody else is, is simply the, uh, a form of uh, continuation of an anti-Semitic behavior, which uh, recollects all the things that uh, both previous and during World War II. Uh, now, I think it should go without, there, there, there are many, there's some caveats that we need to say. I mean, I think uh, it's, it, firstly, it's obviously very important to, to recognize that anti-Semitism exists. It's also important to acknowledge that uh, 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 Palestinians, Arabs, and, and others, uh, and the Palestinian movement has here and there also seen uh, forms of irresponsible use of, of uh, of, uh, of condemning Israeli practices. Uh, but I would also argue here that there has been, uh, uh, <laughs> Israel itself has, has attempted to conflate uh, Israel with Jews. And in fact, certainly locally in Palestine, you have everything done there is, I mean, identity cards are actually determined by, are you Jewish or non-Jewish or, or Muslim? So, so when, Palestinians oppose Israel, they, and, and maybe here and there might use the term Jews, they, 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 they see themselves as effectively resisting their uh, oppressor, calling him by the name by which he calls himself, uh, and, and in whose name the oppression is done, and whose cause it is done in. Now, of course, this, this has created some of the space where, where, where uh, some 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 of the gray area that has existed but overall it's very important to point out okay to continue the argument like you have cases for instance uh with Menachem Begin who called uh, Arafat Hitler for instance but uh I think in the more recent history what you're talking about is actually a kind of um um a really important uh phenomena that actually derives out of the fact that Palestinian solidarity and awareness around the injustices uh, that have taken place against the Palestinians have actually achieved forms of mass, uh, mass to, you know, to the extent that the Labour Party, which is a major historical UK party that has on many occasions taken power in the UK, basically had, had was was showing signs of both mass mobilization and mass support for Palestinian rights. That was if effectively different, a sharp left wing turn from what things had been under Blair when Corbyn takes over, or the Blair, the, the third way Labour. So actually, the the it was very important for the is for sort of Zionist lobbies and the Israeli state to try and corral or uh, hedge or stop that movement because if that was able to take power uh, uh, over the United Kingdom, that would be a major, uh, major loss for them. There's no question about it. So we see a very cunning and uh, cynical uh, campaign that was launched and you certainly know more about it than I do. Um, uh, I think here it's very important to emphasize that uh, some of the most effective voices against this and, uh, have always been uh, Jewish Palestinian solidarity activists who have played major roles in this and, and they're, they're been effectively silenced or tried to be pushed out or made to be seen as though they're extremists. But the, 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 the fact of the matter is actually the extremism is coming from the Jewish supremacist, uh, Zionist, Israeli state and its uh, its institutions, which are backing this campaign, essentially trying to uh, lodge a witch hunt against everybody and, and to paint with a very wide brush 
very anti-intellectually uh, uh, to, to effectively try and stem this. And to some extent they have had, they have been effective, but the more important dynamic is, is actually the fact that they had to play this cynical card because as you say, they are actually erode uh, questions of genuine anti-Semitism and uh, anti-Jewish racism uh, if they, if they, you know, it's, because they're not paying attention to the the fact that Netanyahu is in cahoots uh, with uh, right wing, bona fide anti-Semitic characters. We have an, a, a Trump supporter who was just uh, elected to Congress right now, who, 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 you know, I'm sure is a, a very strong Israel supporter, but who, who went to uh, Hitler's uh, home, uh, whatever. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is this. The right-wing populism and right-wing trends that we see across the globe today are, are in bed with uh, Israel and the Zionist movement, and uh, and uh, so it's true that we live in a very dire moment in history when this is done. But what's important is not to get demoralized about it and to see the broader trends uh, to work patiently and effectively. Uh, to build institutions, to educate folks around it, to to create platforms where we can do effective organizing, and on the one hand, be very serious about any accusation about anti-Semitism, but on the other hand, be uncategorically also uh, strong on the question of Palestinian rights, and they actually go hand in hand because the Palestinian cause is about is effectively against uh, uh, attempts to. To, to, to create, uh, you know, uh, f f f superiority sort of politics. It's a, it, you know, Palestine was a place that had Jews, Muslims, and Christians, and still does in it. Uh, and uh, what Israel was, has been, always been about, has been about trying to impose, uh, create what they call the Jewish state, create what they call a Jewish majority, which effectively means that they have to, ethnically cleanse the Palestinians because they weren't <laughs> they weren't the majority then. And it also means that they have to actually continue pushing the Palestinians out because they have lower demographic birth rates. So uh, this is a project that has within its mechanisms the projects of, of supremacy, of expulsion, and of repression. And uh, that, uh, that is something that all people should be able to identify with and has already has a lot of Jewish solidarity activists uh, who, who, who understand that because of the importance of those issues in, in, in Jewish history, particularly Jewish European history. Uh, so um, uh, I think it's important not to lose, uh, lose uh, how you say, uh, lose courage or lose uh, hope or, or morale on this. History always goes up and down, and I think uh, we're existing in a particularly complicated time in history, which has disoriented and demoralized a lot of folks. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that we, we should not sort of retreat on any fronts, but actually uh, build effective institutions, do that patient work, uh, try to be, be, be I, we need to work effectively to understand some of the problems that we had in our movement. There's no question about that. And any responsible movement needs to be doing that. Um, but uh, history is on our side and we believe in our cause. And, uh, and uh, I think, uh, but, but it needs actors. And uh, the fact of the matter is uh, the left has found it difficult in this period to orient itself. The upper hand will always be the, with the right wing in immediate moments of crisis. And, and to be frank, the rebuilding of the left, left is, a, is a big project. And there was big efforts around this historically that failed. And uh, we're not immune to that kind of demoralization or uh, understanding what went wrong and what will work. And at the end of the day, also, you know, the right or, or capitalism has enormous resources and institutions to, to, to repress, to, 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 to get its message out, to create institutions. The upper hand is with them, but the, uh, at least on, on that side. What, what we lack is our own organization. We're not outnumbered, we're out-organized. And uh, uh, the, 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 the next period needs to be about effectively building a long-term struggle that include, can include the politics of Palestine in it, but also the other movements for social justice that are so needed in, 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 
in our, in our states. And uh, Palestine would be a natural part of that. We need to widen and expand and institutionalize those, the sea within which Palest the Palestinian movement can actually build itself uh, and to be a part of a broader current of progressive politics. And, uh, and, and in that regard, there's some of the divisiveness that we, we have in our politics, we need to stem, I think. Uh, but that's another debate. I won't get into that. Uh, I think that's a brilliant way to, to leave the, the, the conversation. Tufik, um, thanks very much for um, bringing your insights uh, to us today. Um, thank you. And uh, I look forward to, to speaking to you again on, on these issues. Please do. It was my pleasure. And solidarity to all the comrades out there. Don't lose hope. Organize. <laughs> Bless. Take care, folks. Thanks very much. And um, please uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel, like, share this video if you agree with it, uh, and uh, read conta.co.uk. And uh, I look forward to speaking <coughs> to you all again uh, on this matter and many other matters in the, in the coming days, of course, including the US elections. I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thank you. Take care. All the best.